So hello to everybody. Uh, my name is Shachaf um, from Elanox. And on this talk, we are going to discuss um, the way we envision security SDK to look like in DPDK. So the presentation I made along with Ofer Aviv, uh, who couldn't be here today, so this is also a credit uh, for him. Now, if we look on the recent years, years trends on uh, cloud security, we will see that we have more attacks. We have more types of attacks, and the scale is much larger. It, and in some cases, it's as if the whole state nation is attacking a specific customer. On the other side, we see that there is more complexity. Clouds are no, no, no longer the private cloud of each vendor. Now clouds contain many tenants, and virtualization, and live migration. So also the east-west traffic needs to be secure and apply security, the security upon it. And last is that there is more demand. We see it either by more regulations or by the need of the user to have more privacy. So this comes to that, down to that, that we see more and more security application being deployed in the cloud. And on recent years, uh, those applications being deployed as part of VNFs running on the cloud. So among them, we can see, for example, next generation firewalls, intrusion protection and detection system, DDoS application, and so on. And it is very, very attractive to write those kinds of applications on top of DPDK because of, of it is very uh, high uh, packet processing uh, guarantees. So those applications that write, uh, that implement security, natively use regex as their engines to do deep, deep packet inspection. And they are either use some software custom implementation or they use some hardware offloads, uh, either Intel Hyperscan um, or other solution in order to implement their logic. In addition, what we see today is that there are few or several other vendors that provide regex engine for hardware offloads. Among them, we can find Mellanox and Intel and Marvell. And here's the problem. There is no standardized vendor agnostic API for those security application to be written on top of. And that means that in the world of today, each application will need to have a different instance based on the type of hardware it runs on. So you can imagine how trouble it is for those uh, security application to be deployed as a VNF where they need to take a different instance based on the underlying hardware capabilities. So this is why we want to expand the DPDK APIs in order to provide a vendor agnostic and easily uh, and, and simple APIs in order for each security application to be implemented on top of. And those, this SDK should also maximize the device capabilities while enabling all the possible offload to be performed on the device in order to offload much of the um, software pipeline. So the reason why we think such a SDK is exists is because we see that, the, in fact, there is a shared feature path for all of this application. Now, before I speak on the feature path, I mentioned regex many times, but what I mean, in fact, is DPI. So the difference between regex and DPI is regex is only for detect some non-anchor PCRE expression. So you have a buffer, and you want to detect some string inside of it. For example, okay. uh, for example, you want to detect the content of args.command. So this is regex. DPI also embed the network uh, connection ID, IP, headers, TCP, HTTP, all the flow information along with the regex expression. So DPI is the, the, in the majority of the application actually uses DPI signature. And this below example is a signature from Snort that you can see for the first line, for example, it uses uh, some TCP ports. And on the last line, it's also a search for the HTTP and the HTTP URI as part of the signature content. So we need DPI. We not, the regex only is not enough. Going back to the software pipeline, so if we look on those security applications, what they mainly do, they acquire a packet. The majority of the cases, it's encrypted, so they need to decrypt it. Next, the packet needs to go through a connection awareness stage. And on this stage, what we do is mainly we detect the connection ID, 
we do the connection tracking, we validated that the connection is indeed possible and it is established and everything is correct. Um, and on some cases, in case the, there was fragmentation, we, need, we also do the reordering and reassembly before we continue for the regex processing because the regex runs on contiguous buffer and all the packets need to be contiguous without fragment. Next is the DPI processing where we prefer, prepare the packet for the deep packet inspection. We take also the L server parser context and match with the flow ID and inject to our reg extension. Next of this is the, is the inspection. We look for the specific pattern that we want to do. And last is the business logic. We decide whether it is a thread or not. Do we want to drop it? Do we not want to forward it? Do we want to take other actions? And finally, if we, want, if we decide to send it back to the wire, to the target location, we also need to encrypt it. So this software pipeline is heavy, and it's specifically heavy when we start to do the deep packet inspection and the reg extraction, because we need to traverse each and every bit in the, in the packet data. And the question we ask ourselves is, do we have all the DPDK API to address all these needs, so that application, different application will not need to implement the same logic over and over again for a different application, and how much of it we can actually offload. So the answer is that by capable devices, we actually think that the majority of this pipeline can be offloaded, and uh, this is a really good news for all the security applications that want to minimize their CPU consumption. So, Already today, we have the RT security that can provide look-aside or inline crypto acceleration for either MaxSec or IPsec. Uh, so this is something we already have today. We have also the RT flow that can help with the flow classification, the connection tracking, the aging. Uh, the reordering and reassemble part is something that we currently don't have a, a lot of hardware support, so it's mainly done in software. And finally, we have, we have introduced a new regex subsystem that we can wrap with a DPI library that will also take the L7 parses and the flow information in consideration when it performs the regex extraction. So we have a very good news for all the cloud vendors that now we need to actually implement and to have this uh, SDK in DPDK. So in a very high level, the way we see such security application written is that it will mainly use three different libraries. It will use the security library for all the, for all the encryption and decryption needs. It will use a connection awareness library to all of the uh, uh, flow information extraction and tracking and manipulation. So it can either use some sub-libraries that are standalone like RTE flow or IP fragmentation or reassemble library. Um, but the thing is that we want to embed as much as we can uh, uh, and the common logic inside these libraries in order to prevent from being implemented on each and every application that uh, use it. For example, much of this logic already implemented in OVS uh, uh, DPDK. And this is for the specific use case of vSwitch. Now we see another use case for security. Um, last will be a DPI library that will, uh, will wrap the regex uh, uh, subsystem and will be able to provide either inline or look aside acceleration. So the red one in, in the draw are actually the one that uh, we missed today in uh, DPDK. About the usage model, so we actually see two kinds of usage model for such security application. The first one we call it inline acceleration. So with inline acceleration, we have security application running on top of the security SDK, and it's run either in a host or a VM or a container. And in the system, we have a smart NIC connected to this host that have all the, uh, the, the offloading engine. For example, it has a network service, NIC, it has crypto engine, and it has regex engine. All the SDN controller and the network services are running on the ARM, so from the host application look and feel, it's like it's alone in the world, and it see a single interface that is both NIC, crypto, and regex and it acts upon it and configure it with whatever offloads it wants to do. For example, I want to do IPsec, I want to populate the regex with these kind of signatures, and all this information is tunneled to the smart NIC. Now, when packet cross through the smart NIC, all the data movement and acquisition done is done by the smart NIC, so that the host application received a packet which is one, clear text, and two, 
um, added with the metadata of the regex output. So it can just skip down to the business logic and perform all the needed action based on those outputs. In the same way, when the host transmits the packet, um, it transmits a clear text packet, and then this packet is being encrypted uh, by the SmartNIC. So this is one user, user model uh, that we see. It's to hide all the, all the data movement and orchestration uh, uh, from the application, and also to be able to offload it uh, into the hardware in the future. So the application uh, feels that there is a single device that can do all. Second model, which is a little bit more simpler, is the look aside acceleration, where the security application can run inside a SmartNIC or can run in the host on top of the security SDK. And it manages the data movement between the different accelerators you see. It will see a Regex device, it will see a crypto device, it will see a NIC, and perform all the actions that it needs, uh, but with the help of those libraries that we provided. So one example for such device is the Mellanox Bluefield 2. So it's a smart NIC, and it has many offloading engines. One of those is the regular expression. Another one is for IPsec or TLS uh, um, inline acceleration and also connection tracking. So this can be one, uh, one good candidate uh, uh, to be used for the inline acceleration. Um, going into deep dive about the relevant uh, component that uh, we just discussed, um, so I'm not sure if, uh, uh, how many of you attracted, but there is a new proposal in the mailing list. There is an RFC for Regex subsystem that exposed the Regex device that you can populate it with the Regex signatures, and there is an in queue and the queue and async APIs uh, to work with. And so I really hope it will enter to February release. And what we mainly need to do after uh, we, we set the, base, the, the, the first baseline of this library is also to extend the API to have the notion also for inline acceleration. Currently, it's implemented as a look aside uh, device that you can enqueue and decure from it. We want to have also the inline mode. Second is the uh, connection awareness library. And the roles we see for this library is first, we want to do the flow classification to extract the flow ID and to know uh, um, to which what action to be to apply on it. Next, to do the action if this is a NAT or overlay under the conversion for the tunnel headers, to do the connection tracking to make sure that this connection is established and uh, that we allow it, um, to track all the available connection uh, that we have in the system, to know when a flow is edged out and to be notified on it, and on a very, we hope, rare cases, to do also reordering and reassembly for out-of-order packets. So, as I said before, part of this we already do today with RT flow. Uh, but we want to embed those into a single library that uh, can provide a simple APIs to do all this logic. Because if you look, for example, on OVS DPDK, there is a lot of logic uh, that is being implemented just to manipulate the RT flow APIs to do all the action that they need. So if we think about what we require from such application, so one, we need to design it for scale. We need it to support many, many flows, millions. It needs to be able to match uh, on connection uh, six tuples, mainly the source and destination IP and L4 addresses, um, the protocol and some tunnel ID. And we obviously, we obviously want to use the RT flow APIs in order to offload as much as we can of this logic to the hardware. <clears throat> More of the feature list of, of such library can be to support IPv4 and IPv6, uh, to handle the tunnels, uh, we can support maybe many tunnels. Uh, to do the aging, uh, either by uh, timer-based or TCP session aware, where for example, when we know the TCP connection and uh, get the fin uh, message, then we know that we, not, we, we, we want to discard it. Um, to reassemble and uh, reorder packets. Uh, so th this is more or less the, the roles of such library. The DPI library, uh, so as I said, the, the Regex subsystem introduced is very good, but it's not enough. The application will want to have DPI-like signature that combine all the information we gather from the connection awareness library and to embed it into a single action of matching in the Regex device. So we envision that a DPDK library should, uh, should uh, be introduced that wraps the Regex device and provides the DPI semantic first to compilation and insertion of signatures, 
and second for uh, receiving the information of the flow from the connection awareness library and to pass it through the Redux device um, in order to do the DPI signature matching. Um, so feature list for such library, uh, first we want to have heatless upgrade of signatures uh, without stopping the security service. I mean, if the security is running and it runs on top of some database of signature, we want to be able to update this database without interfering in the security service. Uh, we want to organize the signatures that, so that for a single L7 payload, we have a single pass on all the signature and not have to have all the cross matching between those, so this is for it to be efficient. Um, we want to support multiple L7 parsers, HTTP, HTTP2, SSL, DNS, and FTP. Um, we, will, we also want to have a cross-packet inspection because not in all cases the, the string will be on a single uh, buffer. Sometimes if the string is very long, for example, it can spread upon different buffers and the library or the underlying Regex device should support it. And finally, we want to aim at least to support the open source uh, um, security application signature, which are today Suricata and Snort, may and maybe we will have more. Last is the security library, and we already have it, and it, uh, uh, it's mature. Um, currently support IPsec, MaxSec, MaxSec, and PDCP, and we see also TLS as a use case uh, for such uh, acceleration. Uh, so we probably will want to extend it uh, with TLS. So assuming we will do all this work and we have all this security SDK, we can now look into application like Suricata and like Snort and to port them to run on top of DPDK. And this can provide as example for all the security VNF on how it should be done. And then we also maybe will see migration of those applications custom application to run on top of the security SDK. So this is just uh, um, our vision toward the future on how security should look like in DPDK. Uh, we didn't implement it yet anything, um, but uh, this is something we are looking out uh, today. So feedbacks are, are welcome. And if you have any questions. Any questions for Shahaf? Thank you, Shahaf. Very good presentation. Uh, I think you mentioned the uh, TCP or assembly of segments. Uh, what about IP fragmentations when you don't have the whole information in front of you? So, sorry, what is the question? IP fragmentation. It's yes. uh, L3 yeah. splitting of the packets rather than the L4 segmentation reassembly. Ah, you mean uh, here? Because because you need to have the whole stream to, to look at it and do the regex yeah. and, and sometimes yeah. different entities on the network break it for yeah. several reasons. Yeah. So so this is correct. Uh, in, in fact, this may be our, our own syntax for my side. So first here is the L L three uh, uh, reassembly and uh, reordering, and the TCP segmentation TSO and LRO are different contexts. And in fact, the TSO and the LRO is something we can offload. So you mean both of them are supported in the hardware? You don't need yeah. any, any software no, the, involvement the, in that? The L3 uh, reassembly uh, we don't support, at least in Mellanox. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if there are uh, network devices that uh, support it. This is a really big problem, the, the L3. It's, it's a challenge, but it can yeah. be done in hardware. Yeah, so at least that's not support, but I, can, I think that if there are uh, devices that can support it, obviously the connection awareness library should contain the, the required API to do so. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, great. Okay. Thanks a lot, Chef.